I simple set up my basic periosteal, two straight elevator, skinny, large. My um, curette, um, and I have my irrigating. Would you get a saliva ejector for me? Um, get a needle and we have some anesthetic. Topical gel, okay. So I either have the mouth prop or bite block. So um, I'll introduce you to those in a second. We have two different um, mouth retractors. So we're gonna use these two. They're referred to or called Minnesota. Um, it, one of the funniest things was uh, a lot of my students remembered it was a state name and <laughs> they shot a state name. So that's the way, if you remember, Minnesota is kind of what it is. So there are two. There's plenty of different Minnesotas. They look different all the time. Um, who's number? 14. 14. It's a Max Larry 2, so we're going to need a 150. And maybe uh, an 88. Uh, L. There you are. Um, I have two different samples because depending on your office you can put water in the bowl like this or water in a cup. This isn't stable so you can't leave anything inside of it. This is more stable so if I have to go to surgery um, your silk sutures should always be soaking because you always want the silk to be wet um, and your gut. So if you have to go to surgery, you're going to open both of these packages and you're going to dump it inside here and let it get moist because the, the moist it is, the better it runs through blood because blood is thick and it clots, right? So that's why we have them soaking. Um, that's if we go through surgery you want to do that's just a little trick everything else is going to stay in my bag remember the dental assistant's curse i am set up ready to go if we turn into surgery okay i have sterile gauze for me <coughs> sterile gauze for my patient to take home after the treatment's over so i have this ready to go just in case this turns into surgery I can now keep this into the bowl, and again we fill with one hand. So you gotta, that's like just a technique you do, learn. So that's ready. I'm not going to use the cup because it's unstable. If I leave things in my bowl, it's just going to fall over. So that's why I put two samples on. This is also another sample if we're going to use sodium uh, water or uh, sterile water it comes in this kind of thing and you'll just put it in there or tap water you get from the regular sink <laughs> now what's the difference between water well if your doctor is serious about germs meaning this is a sterile field don't touch anything but the instruments in the patient then um, he's going to have probably sterile water um, if he's not very germaphobe then he's going to say tap water and they can vary between it Okay, so it just depends on what the doc's preferences are and how picky, I guess, they could be um, or safe. Again, I have my biological strip. I'm going to keep that there so we all know that it's been sterilized. We're ready to go. My doctor will see that um, so I don't get rid of it until the end. Um, so my doctor's gloved up. I'm going to glove up. Mask, glasses, gloves is the order. All right, first thing we're going to do is wipe the gum tissue, right? Get rid of the saliva and put topical gel. 14. No. <laughs> uh, so quick rule of thumb, always make sure that your harpoon is engaged before you pass it to the doctor. That is one of the worst things to get yelled at. 
because he'll look at you mad that he had to poke the patient and then he's got to poke her again um, because the first time it didn't work. Okay, so past that, expose your needle if we do, put your cap down for your doc to recap. She anesthetizes 14. I'm going to do my rinse. Close your mouth. All right. We, don't forget, this is sterile filled. We have foil that was sterilized on our light. So we can touch that. That should be on so we don't ever touch that during the treatment. All right, let's say your patient is done. So again, we're going to do our basic pass because doctor's just going to verify he's going to work on tooth number 14. Okay. You keep your mirror because you're going to use indirect vision. Pass my periosteal. Now it's game time. This never leaves my hand. I'm going to retract that lip and I'm going to stay close to 14. And when I think she's done with that, Okay, so we're looking for a wiggle, right? I'm going to watch my doc as she elevates. I'm watching it because I want to see the tooth jump or wiggle a lot. If I don't see that, I'm going to make my doctor go back to the first elevator. Can you it out? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, and okay, so now I see a better jump. Now I'm going to make sure my forcep works. Sorry, Doc, this is a little tight. I'm going to tell him that so he knows how much muscle he has to use because don't forget he's one handed. This one is tight like that. So she's going to force up the tooth. She's going to wiggle both mesial and lingually. And she's going to deliver the tooth out. Please protect your hand. Again, because root tips are sharp. Okay, you want to protect your hand, grab the tooth and the force up like this. Now I'm going to be inside the hole, she's going to irrigate, just a little, okay, we're going to clean inside the socket, I'm going to capture anything that's gross and fallen out, after she's done with that, she's going to irrigate again. I'm using my slow saliva adjuster because I want to make sure everything is out of the patient's back of the throat because the next thing she's going to do is bite on gauze. Okay, I'm going to suction, make sure everything looks clean back there. Turn it off. My doc's going to say, you did great, the tooth is out, everything's okay. When he starts talking like that, you're going to get two gauzes or three. You're gonna fold it in half, fold it in half again, and now we're gonna have our patient bite on the gauze and hold it for the pressure, okay? So he's gonna hold that. And so, now while they hold it, we can't let them leave yet. First, we wanna make sure that it's clotting, the, that the, we have a blood clot in the hole or the socket. Um, the only way we check that is we have to have them bite at least four or five minutes. So she's biting, he's biting. I'm gonna pre-clean like busser, like a, you know, at a restaurant. So I'm gonna start cleaning. I'll leave my saliva ejector, my water. I'll take this guy, dump all my stuff out. You know, all my stuff looks good. I wanna cover it because don't forget the patient is gonna leave. Sometimes they get scared again looking at our setup. Okay, so I'm gonna just cover it a little bit. I probably maybe took some stuff over there, meaning cleaning. So I'm trying to get ready for her to get out <sighs> or him. Um, so anyway, five minutes has passed and then I'm going to come out and I'm going to check. So I'm going to be like, okay, let's look. If it look like we have a blood clot in that socket, I'm going to put another piece of gauze for my patient. And now I'm going to go over post-op. I'm gonna have you bite on this gauze for at least a half an hour after this appointment. 
So the, we're gonna make this blood clot last. You're gonna probably ooze tonight, so protect your pillow, your blankets, uh, things like that. Put a towel over because saliva and blood mixed together is gonna be a lot of blood. Please, nothing to suck, no shots. Nothing uh, spicy to eat because you do the sucking motion to cool it off. Nothing crunchy because we don't want anything in the socket. Please do not <clears throat> spit. If you need to spit or you feel like you have to spit, wipe your mouth out or hover over the sink until it falls. Okay, um, nothing, um, no carbonated beverages today. Um, no alcoholic beverages today because either one of those can dissolve the blood clot that's in the socket. Um, so you'll be biting on this gauze and uh, doc prescribed some pain meds for you. So take that as, um, as you need every four to six hours. Um, if you do ibuprofen in the middle of your pain med, it helps with the pain. So do one Percocet or one ibuprofen and you're kind of going to alternate. kind of helps with the pain a little bit better. Um, you could do um, hot and cold presses, 15 on, 15 off. Um, if you have, feel like you have a little bit of swelling, um, you'll be numb for two to four hours. So just be careful if you choose to eat anything um, prior to that. But just be careful. So I'm also sending you home with a written prescription, uh, written post ops, just in case you forget what we just talked about. There's some gauze for you to change. Um, don't change it often, but when you do change it, make sure that this is wet with saliva or drink some water to wet the gauze. Because if you pull the gauze out while it's dry, you're going to pull the clot out. Okay, so make sure this is wet. If you have any questions, please feel free to call. My name is Crystal. You can always ask for me and um, I'll walk you to the front. So there we go. It's post ops are a little bit long with, with yeah. and I say foods. You have to say the type of foods or what you don't want them to use because if you say sucking, um, they will probably go home and, oh, she didn't say a sucker or, you know, uh, things yeah. like that. So she'll probably suck on a lozenge because she feels like she's got dry mouth or maybe the lozenge will change the way the blood tastes. So things like that. So you always got to mention something what they what they have done. Um, we're gonna do this again, and this time we're gonna go through surgery. Okay. So this time we're gonna make to see if we went through surgery. So we're gonna go one more time. What do I do with that dustbin? There it is. Again, I set up my instruments in order of use because. Then you'll never get lost. All we're gonna do, same tooth number, okay, 14. If we happen to use this, we're gonna clamp on this side because it's gonna be out of our way. Or we're gonna put the bite block on this side, either or, okay? Um, another suggestion if we work on the lower, you or me as the assistant has to support the jaw. Not only am I suctioning and passing tools, I'm gonna have to support the jaw. So it gets crazier, okay? Because our joy, we feel like we have 80 hands, and that's exactly what we do, but we only have two. So you gotta make it kind of work, and it's gonna feel like you're juggling for the first couple times until you figure out the doctor. Then you'll be like, oh, okay, I, I, can, I can hold here. You're gonna always have this in your hand, and you're gonna probably pass like this. And then go back into position. So that's if we're working on the mandible and they're because if we put pressure on the jaw, we can hurt the TMJ. All right, so again, we're gonna start in tooth number